Hey guys, it's your girl Ro, and welcome back to another Uncensored Eats cooking tutorial. Today I am making one of my all-time favorite Jamaican dishes. I am making steamed fish. But before we get into this video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend and hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. So, let's get into cooking, let's get into making this dish beautiful, colorful, and just everything a great dish should be. So let me introduce to you what I have. I have pumpkin, I have scallions, well we call this chocho, but this is chayote. We have scotch bonnet pepper, onions, some butter, some tricolor bell peppers, carrots. We have okra, we have tomato, coconut milk, I have lobster base right here. I also have a mixture of uh, all-purpose seasoning, some obey seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, and this is quarter of a teaspoon each. I have my arismatics in here, which I have torn basil, scallions, but this is the, the white part of the scallions versus the green part. So the white part of my scallions is gonna go into my first part of making the dish. I have garlic, some thyme, I don't know if I said that. I have sliced ginger, some juniper berries, and some allspice berries. And I also have my red snapper right here. And I don't know if I said coconut milk, but I have coconut milk right here. And yes, I do add coconut milk to my steamed fish, and this is gonna be oh so delicious. Before we get into cooking, I want to point a few things out when we are buying fish. First things first, when buying fish, if you ever go to a fish market or a seafood market, solely a fish or seafood market, and you enter the market and it smells really, really, really fishy, you need to get out of there really fast. That is not a good sign that you're smelling all this fishy smell from a market that should have more of a sea kind of smell, if that make any sense. If you're smelling fishiness that's coming from a fish market, and I know it's kind of weird because fish is fishy, whatever the case may be, but if it's extremely, extremely, extremely fishy, and I can't stress that enough, uh, that means there there's rotten fish somewhere in the building, or it could be all, or whatever the case may be. When buying fish as a whole, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be red snapper, but fish as a whole. Some of the things that you have to look for. Now, you have whole fish, you have steak fillets, you have fillet fish, you have frozen fish. And I'm going to break down a few of the things that you need to look for in each of those things. So when you're looking to buy fresh whole fish, you need to look for shiny skin. You need to look for tight scales. You need to look for bright eyes. You need to look for red gills, not brownish gills. The fish should smell like salt water. It should smell fresh. It shouldn't smell like it's been sitting in a pond or it's like, or it shouldn't smell like it's it's rotten or anything like that. It should also smell briny, like seawater briny. And whenever buying whole fish, if you poke the skin of the fish, it should spring right back. You're looking for firmness. You're looking for a fish with flat tail and a moist fish. When buying fresh fish fillets or fresh fish steaks, you want to look for white fleshed fish translucent fillets with a pinkish tint. If it's in a package, you want to make sure there's no liquid in the package. If there's liquid, you want to make sure there's very little liquid. When buying frozen fish, you want to make sure the fish is rock hard frozen, no freezer burns, no discoloration, no frostbites, no ice crystals. Those are some of the things to look for when buying whole fish, fish fillets, fish steaks, or frozen fish. Now let's get into our video. Um, I'm going to show you my fish. So I spoke about, hold on. So I spoke about the firmness of the fish and the clear eye of the fish. So I bought these fish fresh and I freeze them until I was ready for it. As you can see, I've already scaled some of the scales off. When you press on it, it springs right back. The eye of the fish is pretty good. 
it was a lot better when I bought it when it was fresh. So I knew the, the fish was good. I removed the gills. The gills was like very, very red. Uh, it's gutted and so forth. As you can see, the fish is gutted, but it's not gutted completely to my liking. So I'm going to move my fish on over to my sink and I'll show you guys how to clean the fish completely. I'll just put this right here. And if we can move over to my sink side, we're going to start cleaning the fish a little bit more and we can get into making this dish even more beautiful. All right, guys. So we are back and we're by my sink and I've placed my fish into the sink. We're going to start by clipping the tail of the fish just a bit. And we're going to remove all the fins so you want to do this some people don't remove the fins I don't know why but I like to remove the fins these are tiny bones and they are a choke hazard and I'm just gonna run my scissors along the dorsal fin right here Now that our fish is all finless, we're going to move into cleaning it a little bit more. So I'm just going to take a paring knife and I am going to run it along the gut of the fish. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this a little bit more or completely. Not to worry guys, I'll have this recipe in the description box down below so please do not forget to check that out if you like this recipe please leave a comment and please share with everyone you know <laughs> so um, we're just gonna keep cleaning like I have to clean all this stuff you see all that this is all blood I hate eating fish that still has a bloodline in it I completely think that is gross um, a lot of people don't clean that out. I have to, have to, have to clean that out. And most of the time, some of the guts are left behind. And I do not like that, so we are going to remove as much as we can. Alright guys, so we're looking really good here. And I'm just going to rinse this under cold running water to get most of the blood out. If not all the blood. And now, and now that all the blood is removed, look at that. That looks beautiful. I am going to use my knife and I'm going to run along the flesh of the fish because more, uh, because sometimes you still have a bit of scale left over. As you can see, I have some of the scale right here. And I'm just going to run my knife over that. Some parts of the fish where the fishmonger uh, can't get to is like the part right here, uh, the part right here, the part right here. Those are parts that still or that may still have scale on it, but a hundred percent chance is that it's always going to have scale on it because they didn't get to that part. Look at that. One of the things I really dislike is eating fish that still has scales on it. Because, like, you bite into your fish and you're still biting into scale, uh, scales. And it's just, like, it's just a huge turn off. And it just completely <laughs> changed the dish for me. I am easily scarred, so I have to get every, like, every scale gone. I know some people take the eye out of the fish, but that's not me. I leave the eye in. I grew up with my mom, my grandmother, my brothers cooking fish with the eyes in. It is your preference. You could do it. You could leave it in. You could take it out. There's, It's not a big deal if it's 
still there. Alright guys, now that our fish is all descaled a bit more, I'm going to rinse it under cold running water. You're going to need half of a lemon and you're going to use that to squeeze into the cavity of your fish and on the outside of your fish. And this is what we are going to be using to clean our fish. You don't want something as harsh as vinegar because if you use vinegar, it will start tearing the skin, it will start slightly cooking the skin of the fish and it will make it slimy. And another thing when looking to buy fresh fish is to make sure the fish is not slimy at all. I've been in some fish stores where the fish is slimy, like slimy slimy. And I don't know how they get away with selling food like that. But um, we're done here. So our fish is done. It smells really good. And that's what it looks like. So the fins are gone. It's cleaned out a lot more. And it's cleaned with half of a lemon. And I'm going to move this back over to my prep station. And we're going to get started. So I've moved everything off to the side, as you can see, because we need this area to prep our fish. Our fish is wet. Before you move into seasoning the fish, you want to pat dry your fish with paper towel or a clean kitchen towel. And we're just going to wipe that up. And we're going to pat dry the cavity of the fish. Now that our fish is done, we're going to get into seasoning our fish. We're moving into seasoning our fish. I have a paring knife. I am going to score my fish. You could do three slits. You could do four slits. I'll put in the description box down below what scoring is. And the reason why I am doing this is to not only have the fish cook evenly, but to have the seasoning but to have the seasoning penetrate the fish even more. So I scored the fish on both sides. And I have my salt right here. I have freshly ground black pepper that I'm going to put in here. And I'm going to mix it up a bit. So I'm just going to add a little to each score. And I'm going to turn this over and do the exact same thing. All right, and then we're going to move into the cavity of the fish. You always want to season the cavity of your fish. It's just one of the greatest way to flavor your, your whole fish. We're going to do the same thing with the top. And we're just gonna add a little around here. I usually use white pepper when I make a fish dish, but in this case, I am using freshly grounded black pepper. And we're just gonna turn. There you go. And this is what my fish look like, all seasoned. And this is going to sit right here for about five minutes. It's best when the fish is seasoned overnight. That way the season can penetrate even more. If you're doing it, if you're doing the fish the day of, you can season it, put it in the refrigerator and let it marinate for about 30 minutes to an hour or however long you want it to. But I am hungry. <laughs> 
I am ready to get this dish going. And this is going to marinate for about five to 10 minutes. And then we're going to move on over to my stove side and we're gonna to get to cooking this deliciousness. All right guys, and we're back and I'm going to add a tablespoon of blended oil and we're going and we're going to let that heat up for a bit. When it comes to steam fish, you want to start with your aromatic first, which is your herbs, garlic, um, allspice berries, if you're adding allspice berries, your juniper berries, if you're adding juniper berries, um, ginger, you want to start with that first, and what we're going to do is we're going to saute those until it is a little translucent and a little browned in color. With that, we're going to create a bed, and then we're going to layer fish on top of that, but you guys will see the whole process as we go along. So my oil is almost there. And we're going to move into getting our arismatic and start with that. All right, guys. So here are my arismatics. I introduced these to you in the beginning of my video, and I'll do it again. So I have my thyme. I have two bay leaves. I have the white part of the scallions. I have garlic. My ginger juniper berry, and allspice berries. And we're just going to let this cook for a bit to release a lot of the flavor that everything has and just marry to each other. I didn't use a lot of oil, only because this is steamed fish. It's not fried fish or brown stew fish. I just needed a little bit of oil to saute my vegetables in. And as you can see, I didn't... I didn't, oh wow, that's, guys, you guys have no idea, this smells really, really good already, our veggies are starting to brown in color, and it's just starting to look really good, but what I was saying before, I didn't mince my garlic, I only sliced them, because I only need my dish to have a hint of garlic, the smaller the garlic, the more potent it becomes, the bigger the garlic, the less intense the flavor will be. Now that our garlic and everything is all sauteed just a bit, it's a little bit brown in color as you can see, and the house smells really, really good, I'm going to move into adding my onions. And we're going to saute this just a bit with everything else. Oh my god, this smells so good. This smells really good. So I'm creating a little bed of vegetables so my fish can lay on top of it. That way the fish is not directly on the bottom of the pan and it won't stick to the bottom of the pan. So creating this bed will help you easily lift your fish out of the pan. So now that all that is going and everything smells good, it looks really good, I am going to lay my fish in the pan. So you want your fish to steam. You don't want it to, you don't want it to fry, you don't want it to do anything else other than steam. And my fish is bigger than my pan, and I can't believe that. I thought this was big enough for the fish. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of coconut milk. Some water. I'm going to turn my flame down just a little bit. And we're just going to shake it around just a little. Oh, this is starting to come together really nicely. We are going to move into adding our onion powder, garlic powder, obey, and all purpose seasoning. I'm gonna give that a little shake. And we're going to add our a teaspoon of lobster base.
We are going to add a little bit more of water, but you don't want to add too much water only because you want the fish to steam in its own juices. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. And oh, this looks so good. Oh my God, I can't wait for this. And I'm going to move some of the veggies into the cavity of the fish and just stir this around. Oh my God, this looks so good. We're going to cover a fish and let it steam for about 10 minutes. Now, fish don't take too long to cook, especially when you're steaming it. So you don't want to overcook the fish. You still want your fish to be soft, succulent, and flaky. Once the fish is all steamed, we're going to move into adding all our veggies to it. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, and we're back, and it's been about 10 minutes, and our fish is, oh my god, our fish is looking really, really good. So let me turn this around for you so you can see. Look how much juices this sprung with the little bit of water we added. So we're going to add our pumpkin. Oh my god, this is going to be so good. We're going to add our pumpkin, and this is just going to cook into the juices of the fish. And we're going to add our chayote. So we're just going to start adding all our veggies. Oh, my all-time favorite, okra. I love okra. I have a huge obsession with okra. We're going to add our scotch bonnet pepper. I slit this in half to release the spice. And I'm just going to open it a bit more and just lay it flat so the spice can be released. The green part of my scallions. Ah. Oh, this looks so good. Look how good this looks. Some carrots. My tricolor bell peppers. Oh my god, this dish is going to be fantastic. And I can't forget my tomatoes. Oh, oh my god, this looks so good. Look at this. Oh. And with all the vegetables laying on top of the fish, it is just going to spring a bit more of the water from all the vegetables from the fish and it's just going to cook and seal the fish in with flavor even more i can smell the goodness of this already and i just can't wait to dig into this so we're just going to cover that and just let it continue to cook a bit more and we're going to come back in about 10 minutes because we want all our vegetables to cook and after the 10 minutes our dish is completely done we'll be right back guys Right, guys and we're back let's take a look at our fish I can smell this and oh, oh my god that looks like it's ready guys that is done that is done 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 so I'm just going to add a little bit of butter to my dish so it can round out the sauce adding butter to round out the sauce makes the sauce makes the sauce even smoother and a bit silkier and even more flavorful so as you can see my veggies are cooked perfectly they are not soggy they are not overcooked they are just perfect oh my god i'm going to turn this off and i'm just going to let the butter do its thing this looks so good guys oh my god i can't wait i'm just gonna eat one of my okra mm, mm, -mm. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. I am going to use a much bigger spoon and spoon that onto my fish. Oh my god, that looks so good. The spice is just right. It is not too spicy. It is just right. Alright guys, this is ready to go. Move that off to the side and let that rest for a bit. There you have it guys, my Jamaican style steamed red snapper. This is like the best steamed fish you'll ever have, I swear. So this is it for me guys. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tiger friend to tiger friend. Again, this is your girl, Roll from Uncensored Eats. Thank you guys for the love and support. Thank you for always being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.